good. Welcome back, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to AM Radio. Thanks for tuning in to CB Radio. Thanks for tuning in to Walkie Talkie Radio. Uh, yeah, we got a uh, 909 on uh, Smith Avenue, corner of uh, Smith Avenue, 9th Street. If anybody could respond, all units requested. Anybody out there can respond. Go ahead. We got a uh, uh, hit and run. We got a a smash and grab on uh, 9th Street and uh, Washington Street. If anybody can uh, requesting any unit uh, nearby, thank you. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, guys. You know, defund the cops. That's all I got to say. Defund the police. police. I don't want to hear anything like that anymore. I don't want to hear anybody, anybody being, being requested. 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 Here's what I want to hear, okay? Uh, we got a uh, smash and grab. We got a uh, uh, we got a kidnapping on uh, 9th Street and uh, Washington Avenue. No units requested. Uh, we are standing down. Let them do their thing. Give on the police. Thank you. That's what I want to hear. When it goes over the uh, police radio... That's what I want to hear out there. I want to hear nothing. I want to just hear them logging what's going on and that's it. I don't even want to see a siren. I don't want to see anything. I just want to see them or anarchy in the fucking streets, okay? I'm a punk. Anarchy. I used to, when I was younger, like, think, why don't we just have whatever, everybody does whatever they want and, like, then you quickly realize, like, no, people can't be trusted, so. Not everybody. A lot of, most people are trustworthy, but when you say defund the police, I mean, there are too many crazy people. There are people that can't be helped out there, like, that won't stop doing bad things. <laughs> That's a, they're called criminals. They're called, like, bad criminals. If we didn't have those people, maybe we could just not have police. But, you know, anyway. You know, because there's just been crime here again lately in the subways. uh, Lots of crime going on. All in the subways. I don't know why. But you know what? Actually, I have a theory about this. Oh, the New York Times is reporting on this, even though they're... They were probably, like, defund the police advocates or whatever. I mean, I can't read this, of course. Oh, this is interesting. NYC has dip in shootings, murders, but overall crime index rises. Um, I don't think it's as bad as, like, the past two years right now. I'll give them that, but... the The big problem is that whole bail law where they just throw people out, they don't even have to stay, you know, no bail, whatever it's called, no cash bail. You used to be able to look at some articles on, like, New York Times and stuff, but now it's just, like, immediate paywall, because they're probably losing so much money from the pandemic, and, like, because no one reads them anymore. Yeah, it's not as bad as last year, I guess. I mean, so I got a, I guess, you know, but there's, there was like a, you know, like it says here, stabbing. It was just a random stabbing the other week. And then like yesterday, there was a, an old man got pepper sprayed on a, in a subway station. And I guess the whole subway car was like coughing and like gagging because it was so strong and they had to evacuate the car. Uh, and I actually went, you know, I, I went by that station yesterday after. I was like, you know, I easily could have been on that car. Um, I guess it wouldn't have been... It's not like... I mean, it's obviously not as bad as a stabbing. But I would have got... I would have been hit by the pepper spray. Uh, you know, I just... I My theory about the subway crime is like... Well, like here, I'm glad, like... I mean, as much as I don't really like the new New York mayor, like... He has been putting more cops in the uh, subways. They haven't done anything, apparently, but I see more cops in the subway. You have to give them that. I mean, I do see more cops. I mean, I don't know if that's been doing anything. Maybe. But I think that law where they just don't have people stay and there's no cash bail, 
these bad offenders. I mean, yes, yeah, not a lot. It's not a lot of people, but it doesn't take that many to be to have a crime wave of people just going on the subway. The problem is there's too many people in the city. You can just stab somebody and then the way you would do it is you 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 know, you stab somebody and then you get really quick on the subway. I mean, they stop for like when a sub when a train stops in a subway station, it's like less than a minute that they're sitting there. It's probably like 10 seconds. It's like nothing. They wait until people get off and then people get on, but sometimes that's like really fast. So you could easily get away with doing that because there's usually, even if there is cops, like there's been cops I've been seeing, mostly in the one near Wall Street, where I, which is where I, I don't want to dox myself, but uh, <laughs> I go in that one a lot. I see like three, maybe four cops in that one every day, but it's always for some reason after I'm done work. It's not in the morning. So And, and that's the problem. Like these, these crimes don't happen rush hour usually i guess although it kind of did yesterday with the pepper spray thing but um i mean good have more cops there but you can still stab somebody then run quick and into a car a train car because like the only place that the train um conductor you know the person that operates the train subway trains it's one person and they're all the way in the front and they stick their head out like to look for, like, just to see if people are getting on or off so they can cl- close the doors and leave. And, uh, there's nobody on any of the car. It's not like there's trained personnel on the cars, like there's on Amtrak or something. There's nobody there. It's only the train engineer, and maybe if there's a cop in the station, that's it. But they'll, they'll clearly, they'll miss, like, most of the subway cars. I mean, and whatever's happening on the subway cars, you're trapped in there. I mean, you can switch subway cars technically when it's moving, but that's, like, dangerous and, like, um, I mean, yeah, you can do that, I guess. But it's not that easy. Uh, and, like, you know, I've never done it. I don't want to do it. But there's no personnel. There's no one keeping track. There's no cameras in there. There's nothing. When you're in, on the car, you're kind of helpless, I mean. So you could have, unless they get cops in every fucking subway car. I mean, maybe in a hundred years from now, they'd have that many cops to do that. Or they'd have, and I I wouldn't love cameras everywhere either. I mean, it's kind of nice, like, uh, having a break from stuff. Like, they said that they're going to put internet, like, in, like, you won't, like, right now you lose cell phone connection when you're underground on the train. But I guess in the future that they are going to have it so that doesn't happen or something. And that's kind of like, I don't know, it's almost a nice break to just uh, not call, be on the phone. People can't be on the phone then. Otherwise, yeah, you're going to in the future just everybody's going to be playing shit loud and like on the phone. Uh, And it's only like, it's, you know. But, uh. Yeah, so that's why I think that those crimes are happening. It's easy to escape, and it's easy to get evade on there. There's too many people. I mean, uh, during the pandemic, I guess hardly anybody was using the subway, so uh, it was just the crazy people <laughs> using it and homeless people because they didn't care about COVID. You know who didn't care about the pandemic? Uh, the crazy people and the criminals and, like, just crazy people, really. I don't even know if these are, like, criminals or just people that are nuts and schizophrenic or something. And just aren't, like, we don't have a cash bail now, you know? So they're just letting them out. Like, you stab somebody, okay, you get uh, booked or whatever, and then you can just go. I mean, how can you support that? (laughs) I mean, you have to be the most naive idiot to think that there's nobody that's bad, a bad person, that's going to go do it again. You just think every human being is, like, honorable? I mean, you'll... God. Anyway, I have a bit I'm trying about that where it's just about. I told Dehaj about it. Um, I don't know if I mentioned it before. I probably did. Just about how 
you know, it doesn't make sense to not have cops and only have like mental health people with like a clipboard in the subway <laughs> wanting to talk to somebody, talk them down, you know, uh, you know, but like, that's how it is. Oh, it says here the governor will provide funding for subway cameras. Okay, let me ask you this, though. Okay, so there's cameras in there, so you can, I guess, catch the guy. Here's the problem. If, even if you do catch the guy, we have that cash law. Cash, we have the no bail thing. So it doesn't even matter. They're only in there for like an hour or something. Like, so what if you catch him now at this point? Oh, good, we're going to have cameras. Yeah, yeah, you're not going to be able to do anything live, though. Like, unless you have a live... Like, you'd have to have, like, cops on the train itself. And they can somehow see every camera on every subway car. Impossible. I mean, you would think, if you don't live here, you might think, why can't they do that? It's New York City or something. I mean, I don't know why. I guess, I mean, they have they pay so much money for the fucking subway, like... And then, you know, a year or two ago, there was all that stuff about, like, the overtime. Like, all the MTA employees were, like, uh, stealing overtime and just faking it or, like, doing, um, just sitting around and getting overtime. So they had all this, they had ton, tons of debt, too. And then, like, and then they were wanting to get bailed out by Trump, even though de Blasio was going at Trump all the time. Like, yeah, great strategy, you know. Um, I mean, this is only one of the problems going on right now. So it's like, you know, you can't even get that upset. You're just like, oh, okay, well, they may provide funding for subway cameras. That's going to do a lot. Just do the, just do away with that bail law. That's all we need to do. I mean, yeah, cameras might help after somebody gets stabbed and killed. And then you look at the footage after, but there's no way to to do that live. I mean, there's just no way to do it. You have to stop the car. The, uh, here's what you'd have to do. The train conductor, I guess, <laughs> no, he's, he's driving the train. He can't look at the cameras. You'd have to have someone in there that's looking at the live feed of the cameras, which I don't know if they can do because underground, like I said, you don't get, like, signal. And then you have somebody, like a security force on the train. They go car by car and try to find the person. They'd have to stop the train. Maybe. Unless they're going to just do it when it's moving, I guess. But then when the train stops at the station, they'd catch the guy. But, yeah, I don't know. This just would take a lot of time and money. I don't think it's happening anytime soon. I mean... And if they keep doing that bail law, like, it just doesn't matter. I mean, it just doesn't even matter. And I like how this new mayor keeps acting like he's going to be like, oh, we're going to clamp down on the crime, and then, like, he'll go back. He'll go like, um... (sighs) They're just, like, ridiculous. I haven't seen him do shit, though. I haven't seen the cops do anything except talk to, like, a guy. Yeah, see, right here it says, uh, a small art of uh, people who are getting released with no bail after getting arrested who are driving crime this year. Yeah, of course. Who would have thought that if we keep releasing these people that they would just do it again? That's crazy. That's crazy when you have no consequences how people just keep doing it then. Because they think you're a fucking idiot. They have no respect for you. God. Unbelievable. It doesn't matter if it's a small amount of people doing that. Because they just keep doing it. One stabbing a week is, is bad, you know. I know there's lots of people in the city. But like one stabbing a week would keep people out of here. I mean. We're basically in a Batman movie at this point. We have Vigilante. We're going to have a Vigilante. We need a Vigilante, okay? Like I said last time, in another episode, we need a Bruce need Wayne, a Bruce Wayne Bruce now. Wayne. Now. Wayne. now. Okay? Now. Okay? Why okay. can't one of these big tech guys become like a Vigilante that's like trying to fight crime, you know? Why can't we have Elon Musk take a, uh, make an armor suit like Iron Man and get the fuck out there? Stop this fucking crime, 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 cr
time to get the fuck out there and stop this shit. Elon Musk man. Musk man to the rescue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, everybody. Anyway, um... Yeah, I did have an interesting week this week. I went to this one open mic and, um... I don't even remember their names. Not like I was going to use their names anyway. But there was these two guys that they both said it was their first time ever doing comedy. And uh, the thing about it was they were both so weird. Like, they were both, like, really, like, they're, they were, um, I, don't, I mean, this guy, like, the first guy went up there and he just had this, like, smug, weird attitude, like, and I could have sworn it was a bit that he was faking that it was his first time doing stand-up, like, purposely bombing for, like, the internet or something. Because uh, there has been real videos like that. Like, uh, oh, I'm doing alternative comedy and I'm purposely bomb. It's not hard to per- bomb anyway. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to make a character that's bad. You don't have to work hard at, at doing a, like, oh, I better be in character to make sure I bomb. Like, no, you will bomb. Like. Most of the time, I mean, a lot of the time, I mean, especially if you're new like that, you just won't know how to really do it. Uh, And uh, so they both, like, went up. The first guy was more nervous than the second. Well, the first guy went up, like, with this smug attitude, kind of, but he was also very clearly nervous. I don't even know if he realized he was talking to him after, because um, he, he was like, do you have any tips, like... And I was thinking, I mean, the whole thing. <laughs> well, he didn't do an, any real comedy. I mean, he just went up there uh, and, like, talked about how he he didn't do it before. And then he was like, I don't have anything planned, which is fucking crazy. I guess, like, well, anyway, I'm not, I have to, I'll explain. You'll understand that more in a second. Um. And he just was, like, riffing like he had nothing to say, which I've never even done that. Like, I still don't do that. Going up there purposely not having any material. I mean, I don't know. what I, I mean, it's like a, it's basically like a, I'll see if I can do this kind of thing. Like, oh, it's going to be brave because I, like, I guess if it was part of a show or something, I would try it. But the reason I go even to Mike's is because, oh, I thought of something. It's not like I'm just going to wing it up there. Maybe if you're really good and have done it for that long. But I don't think so because even. But it's more of a gimmick like I think. And and even if that is a thing like I just don't believe. I don't even know if I believe that comedians do that. Like. I guess like I could see if you literally haven't been thinking of anything they're talking about and you're just like fuck it I'm just going to go. Uh, but I just, I'm really skeptical about, like, if any comedian claims that they do that, have no idea what to talk about. They said, like, Andrew Dice Clay did that for one of his albums, and it was this really long one, too. And I, I keep forgetting to, like, listen to that just because he, he's winging it the whole time. But I don't even know if I believe that he will. I just, I don't know, like... Just going, like, have nothing... Because every day you have thoughts, so how is it nothing, you know? I don't know. I could see, like, you know, like I said, if you're a more established comedian, then you just, like, you're like, I have this little idea, I'm going to work it out, like. But no, having nothing at all is crazy. I mean, that is, that is, I mean, yeah, it's brave, like, to do that. But, like, this kid did. I mean, nothing got to let, like, you can do that, but it probably won't be funny. Like, I would just, like, say what I'm thinking, like, on this podcast. Most of this is not funny. <laughs> I mean, you know, a lot of people like I've been seeing um, people say this, and I, I used to think it too sometimes. Like in the Tim Dillon Reddit group, they'll be like, you know what, like his podcast is funnier than his stand-up. And I'd, you think that maybe because it's more natural, like he's off the top of his head. And I think just the joke format of jokes. Like if somebody seems like they're telling a joke and it's too rehearsed, then it is pretty corny and boring. But, um, I just, it's actually not true. I mean, podcasts are just not as funny because 
it's just what you're thinking at the time. It's just like most of it is not even close to good enough to say on stage. I mean, sometimes I will have something on here I say, and then I try on stage. Like the other week, the thing about um, little kids being really good at, at uh, guitar and their parents like abusing them. I have tried that recently on stage. I mean, but that's hardly ever happened. But I think Tim Dillon probably does that a lot because they said, oh, I've heard this all on his podcast. So his podcast is funnier. No, it's not. He narrowed it down to be more funny because uh, he was just like talking on his podcast and it happened to be funny. But then when you go on stage, you have to make it like shorter and better. So, I mean, it's like saying, it's basically the same thing as saying like, um, randomly writing down ideas is better than like a, a novel, you know, like Stephen King's scribbles that he has of ideas that he has. That's better than a book that he does. That's not true, you know, but yeah, it can definitely just sound more natural on a podcast and it just seems more listenable, I think too, because the best comedians are the ones that you don't even think they're, they wrote it down and it just sounds like they're talking. Um, like Bill Burr and like, uh, just a lot of comedians sound like they're just riffing. Even at this mic, this kid asked me if I made it all up as I was going. I was like, no. Anyway, I really got off track there. <laughs> I really got off track uh, got there. Off track there. there. I have to go I have back, to and, go restart. back restart. and restart. Back restart. Back restart. Restart. Uh, so this kid, uh, okay. So the first kid, it was two guys. Both young, probably in their twenties. The one, one first kid was a white kid that looks like me almost, except he was a little taller and like annoying. No. <laughs> um. So he went up. He just riffed. He just talked. He talked about some woman he was dating that has kids. Bad idea, I thought, but whatever he wants to do. And then, uh, well, he talked about this thing that's an epidemic. I've been noticing. Young guys, like, he, he started to brag that, like, oh, I'm dating. He was, like, in his 20s or whatever. He's like, so I'm dating this woman who's 40. <laughs> so I'm dating this woman. Guess what? She's 40 she's years 40 old. Years old. 40 years okay. Old. okay. 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 And, like, I've been noticing younger guys, even guys in their, like, that are 30, they'll say that. And I'm like, that's not a brag, actually. Um, <laughs> I mean, if you're, if you're in a relationship with one, it's not a brag. Uh, and he said she had kids, so that's not a brag at all. Um, but uh, so that he just talked about that. Then his friend went up on after. And he was slightly, like he had jokes or whatever. I don't know if you, I'm skeptical that he even wrote these jokes himself. Like maybe they both worked on them or something. I don't know. But he had jokes, but he was also clearly, he was really new, you know, and he was not. They both, I think, were, I mean, they were really uncomfortable, but, like, at least the second guy prepared a little bit. And then, but when he was going up, his friend with the glasses, white guy, like, the second guy was an Asian guy that was younger. And the first guy was his friend. And his first guy was sitting up front right next to him when he was going up. And he was, like, giving him notes in his ear as he was talking. And it was, like... Everybody, all the other comics sitting, we're all like, what the fuck is this? Like, because it really seemed like it was like, like it was a uh, troll. Like, what are they doing? Like, what is this for TikTok? You know, like, like, oh, two guys, uh, two guys, first time doing comedy. They pretend that they're doing stand up. I don't know. I thought it was a bit and like still kind of wonder if it was. Uh, and the fact that he kept like during the dude's set like the asian kid he he kept like getting his attention and telling him like hey loosen up and he was like sorry my friends tell me how to like be, act or whatever and we were all like what is this it clearly seemed like a troll like a bit cuz nobody does that cuz it's for you know stupid but uh so they went up and um i could already tell before the mic that they were I don't know. I thought they were friends with the host of it. It was this girl, but I think they were just hitting on her. Like they were trying to like 
And so this is why I wanted to tell the story. I think that those two guys were trying to be like wannabe pickup artists and they were doing game. <laughs> they were like in the pickup artist community and I think the first guy was this Asian kid's coach or something because he said it later. The Asian kid was like, oh, this guy's my, like he's my coach. He's helping me do all the, they, they both had a list of like stuff to do to challenge themselves. It was so like cringy. Like, I mean, I don't like, I'm not trying to hate on if, this wasn't for a douchey reason, like a pickup artist. I'm not trying to hate on it. I just think it was a pickup artist thing. Like, because I didn't read a book called, uh, I have to look up the book now. I read this book over lockdown. I mean, I just read a bunch of books over, this was an audio book I listened to, I think. Oh wait, no, I read this because the audio book is like a shortened version. So this is called uh, The Game, Penetrating the Secret Society of Pickup Artists by Neil Strauss. This is a real book I read. Um, and I read it half to laugh at it. And also because I, I really was like, you know what? I'm going to hear him out. Maybe let's see if this really is like convincing. So I did read this. Neil Strauss wanted to be one of these guys. So he actually, like, he didn't just be a journalist. Like, he really did do this stuff. And after this, he, like, has had, like, a, like, uh, he went to, like, sex addiction therapy because I guess he couldn't, like, drop the doing the act to women and getting laid or whatever. Um, and this is kind of close to the red pill co community with guys, like, and the, uh, men's rights people. But it's, like, a little different because a lot of those people are just like sick of women or, or like just don't like women. Incel is different. You're not even, you know. And incel is, is, is somebody that could join this. I mean, I did read up on this stuff. Like, um, cause I did read, uh, I mean, there is a lot of like, uh, misconception out there about, the men's rights community, whatever. Um, a lot of it is like cringy. Like the incels obviously are the worst. But then there's these people that are like trying to learn how to trick women into it is really tricking women. I mean, I know they don't they didn't like he doesn't describe it that way in the book. And it's funny because as you as you read the book, he does start to like change and go, I should just be myself, like <laughs> And he doesn't meet a girl that he actually likes as a person. And he keeps trying to do his techniques on her. And she, like, doesn't go for it. And, uh, and he just drops it. And he just, like, really what it is is he just wasn't confident with women. And that's what all these guys are. They're just not, con like, or they go from being an insult, like, hating women into, I want to just have, I want to trick women into sex. And, like, a lot of the insult guys are just, like perverts and they don't I think it's different though there's different types of guys like I even have heard podcasts with some woman that like went into the incel community and learned about him and she even says like yeah it's just, I don't know it's a lot of sad lonely guys really it's like and she even admitted like yeah the media is really hard on men now I mean and it, that is true there is a lot of like to me I, I see why they join the like well, I mean, no, I would never join the incels, like, but I can see why you'd be frustrated with society and women. I mean, but I could see why you'd be that way with men, too. I mean, so I don't, I mean, but just to, like, defend these guys a little bit, you know, this is just an exaggerated version of what every man does, because... Well, I don't know. Maybe not. I don't know if, like, some guys are just, like... But if you're not, like, confident around women, you have to kind of just learn to be confident. That's all it is. Like, you know, you just have to be yourself, really. And it sounds really easy, but 
a lot of guys, a lot of these guys, they think they need to be like different to get girls. And uh, that's why they join this thing. They think, well, I don't look like um, these chads out there. I don't look like these jocks out there. And it's like, yeah, most guys don't look like that. But they, but they think they should, and then they have to... Like, this is basically a raging against women because of all their years of not getting them. Uh, but Neil Strauss, I think he just wanted to get laid a lot, and that's why he joined it. And he just was like, I wish I could do that, and then he did. But and it worked. I mean, you can hate this, and I do. I mean, I think it's <laughs> so embarrassing. I would never do, be able to do any of the stuff that he did. Uh, I mean, and the and the whole thing called negging gets kind of a bad rap too. I mean, unless you're doing it like the exaggerated version, like some of these pickup artists did, like the guy Mystery who had a show on VH1. Um, like he, a lot of them did negging, like actually being mean to girls. <laughs> and hey, you know what though? It did work. They got horrible women from it. I mean, I'm sure all the women they got are hard, are like shitty people, you know. <laughs> I mean, or like, or just crazy or something. I don't, I don't know who would fall for that, but I mean, if you read the book, I mean, this guy, like, the author got so many women he like couldn't keep track of them. Uh, and I, I really, you know, what I think that was like. So, so he would go out with like a a crew, and they'd all go out together to these clubs, and they'd all like do the same you know, I guess be each other's wingmen. And I think if a lot of women were like, oh, this guy is like, oh, there's something to this guy. He's with this group of guys, like, and then they start dressing different and like um, do that peacocking thing, which is so douchey. Like you wear, like, you know, look up the guy Mystery and you that's what he does. He like dresses for stupid as hell, like a clown almost, just to get attention. And, you know, they don't maybe make people go, like, they don't make women go, oh, who's this guy? That's. And then if you're with, like, a crew of guys, you might kind of get seduced into thinking this guy is somebody, and then that's how it works. I mean, so I don't really know if it was, I don't know. Um, But it is a good book. I mean, honestly, it's really not as bad as you'd think. You'd think it would be super douchey, but, like, it is really interesting, like, and it is funny. Um. So I do, I actually recommend the book. Like if they, they should have made a movie of this and I think maybe they were working on it. I don't know why they didn't make it, but I think now that would be called like misogyny. I just don't think the stuff that these guys did would be cool today. I mean, with the me too, but they didn't, it's not like they assaulted anybody. They just like, they would do these corny tricks. Like they'd all be like, they had certain things they did. Like they'd be like, um, I don't know. They'd just be like, "Oh, girls love astrology," and then they'd go up to him and be like, "What are your what's your sign?" And then they'd be like, "Oh, your sign is this. Let me do this little trick and tell you what this means." And then, and then they'd maybe be like, "Oh, well, I'm this sign. I don't think we'd work out. I don't know if we'd work out. You know, what would our kid look like? Like they'd get them thinking about this, like you as like a partner, and that would like." trick them mentally into like thinking about you like <laughs> instead of just being yourself and you know asking a girl out you just like do all these tricks like and look I'm, I, w- I never was the type of like a one night stand like I just don't I don't even like it's a it sounds like exhausting and depressing to me like um and you know in the time you'd be horny but then after uh like no thank you I don't know I just feel like the the women you'd meet doing that would suck and then you might you might actually I guess I'd you know you'd get someone pregnant you'd be stuck with this like horrible woman that you met in a shitty club cuz you were po- and you're both drunk like that's kind of how they happen like one night stands aren't like magical you know they're just, there's like two desperate people that have sex or whatever and I honestly no this guy did not really like the author like, he he did some of those tricks, and, like, he said he regrets some of it, but, like, all these women were in, like, they, they weren't, like, really tricked, you know? Like, they wanted, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I, I didn't read it like, oh, this piece of shit. Like, 
Some of the guys were, though. Like, he would describe some of the uh, guys in the group that were pieces of shit, you know? <laughs> like, some guy that was, like, a magician, and he, and he tricked women, and he was, like, a real creep. And some of the guys in this group would be, like, ugh, see how douchey this is? His technique sounds like a car salesman tip sheet. Uh, his main role is FMAC, find, meet, attract, close, meaning have sex. He employs the three-second rule. Always approach a, real, a woman within three seconds of first seeing her in order to avoid getting shy. Um, other tricks. In, intrigue a beautiful woman by pretend, pretending to be unaffected by her charm. Never hit on a woman right away. Um, you know, that's kind of normal though, isn't it? Start with an innocent remark like, do you think magic spells work? Uh, that's not a, that's a weird remark though. <laughs> uh, ugh. and they gave themselves like, by the way, this is one of the more, more douchey. They gave themselves names like uh, Mystery, and he gave himself the name Style. My name's Style. My name's style. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. okay. Yes. Yo, this Style, I'm up in the house. Yeah, he meets a girl named Lisa, and Lisa keeps kind of like, <laughs> it's funny because this girl Lisa keeps kind of telling him like, what are you doing? Like, stop acting like that. Meet and close the deal. A lot of guys think this way though I mean honestly a lot of guys I mean I knew guys in uh, the comedy scene in Philly that kind of talk like this like always close and shit you know what I'm saying like did you close like what are you fucking talking about I'm not I'm just not a guy that is like a guy's guy where that you just talk about did you hit that shit I don't know I just like always am But anyway, so these two kids, I think, were into this stuff. Um, see, and it says here, Neil Strauss, um, he was always, like, just a nerdy guy. He had a large, bumpy nose, small, beady eyes, glasses, balding head, and painful shyness around women. Well, he had the painful shyness because of these things. He was skinny, large, bumpy nose, small, glasses. Probably look like, I don't know, like a neurotic Jew guy. And then he calls himself Style. Um, I don't know, it just doesn't... I wouldn't want to be sleeping with a, one different woman at, every day or something. Like, I don't know. Yeah, you see all these digits. Yo, look at all these names I got saved in my phone. One for every day of the week. My, my N-word. <laughs> uh... Anyway, these two guys, I think, were into this because they said later. Okay, so I said that, like, after the mic, the one guy, the white guy, came up to me and was like, oh, do uh, you have any tips? And, like, well, he did compliment me, like, so I can't really, like, I'm not trying to trash him because he did compliment me, so. But I just still am like, what was that? Like, <laughs> uh, I just got annoyed because, like, he was like, do you have any tips? And I thought they both were, like, going to start doing comedy. And then later I found out it was just like an off it, it was just a checklist item for them. Like, they had this big list that they were, and then they were, you know, like I said, uh, the white guy kept talking to the girl host, like, flirting with her, and he kept touching her hand for, like, he was like just holding her hand, like caressing it. And then I think he was doing something like in this book, like, oh, let me read your, I don't know, um, thumbprints or what. <laughs> let me read your, I think he was seriously doing this. Like, let me read your hand line. Oh, yes. That means, that means that, uh, oh, so I see her in Aquarius. Like he was doing that, but he kept touching her and he was clearly trying to do this stuff. Um, and I think that checklist was probably part of some program like this. And I mean, I wouldn't know that they were doing this in, unless I read this book, I don't think. 
I didn't really want to out them and say, I know what you're doing. Because they confused me with the stand-up. That that wasn't mentioned in this book or anything. I mean, uh, but clearly that it was part of like a disarm. Your, like, get yourself... Um, they're not the only people that put stand-up as like a checklist item. There's like a, a thing at a lot of comedy, like open mics, like an inside joke about every year there's like a bunch of new resolution people that try to, they're like, I'm doing stand-up. I'm going to try stand-up. And they might do one set and that's it. And it's just a really weird bucket item, uh, list item to me because I don't know if people really understand, like, it's it's not public speaking. I mean, public speaking, you don't have to really get, like, I don't know. I mean, I guess you can get good at it, but, like, it's so different. Public speaking, you don't have as much pressure on you because it's only about speaking, period. It's not about getting laughs. Like, um, I guess they probably just see comedians and they're like, I'm going to add that. I'm going to make a New Year's resolution. I don't really know where it came from. I think... I think, honestly, a lot of it came from how there's so many comedy podcasts. Like, there's just, there was, like, an influx of comedian podcasts talking about how to do stand-up. Like, Mark Marin, Joe Rogan especially. But, like, Mark Marin and, like, whenever, he used to only have comedians on. He would only talk about getting the work in, getting the stand-up. Like, how do you do stand-up? And, like, I really think a lot of people thought I can, either I can do that or like um i'm gonna do that like because they talk about it i don't know i don't get, i don't know why it's it just is a weird like i'm gonna challenge myself and do this as a bucket list and i'm i just have no interest in you if you are at a mic and you're doing that like don't ask me for tips because you're never because you're only doing it for a dare like like good for you i guess it's brave to do something way out of your comfort zone but it's out of my comfort zone still i mean you know, you know, and the guy asked me, like, uh, it was weird. He was, like, complimenting me, but then he was, like, so, like, was your, like, being nervous part of the bit or something? And I was, like, no, I'm just like that. <laughs> uh, and he was, like, after that long, I'm, like, that's just, yeah. I mean, you know, some people have, like, I mean, it is something I don't like. I really don't like about when I do stand up, and that's why I took a break for a while over the pandemic. Like, thinking like, should I do this if I'm still nervous? Like, but like, you know what? It's it's really for me just about getting bits out there, doing the material. Like, it's not about. I think people have a misconception. Like, oh, you must love attention because you're on stage. Like, no. <laughs> And I'm not the only one. I mean, I have met other people, even in open mics, like, that were, like, not, like, social butterflies at all. There's a lot of guys like that, that do comedy. It's not like, I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm more like, like, I don't know, awkward, like, um, just different, awkward or whatever on stage. Like, I guess, I don't really know how noticeable, like, I, I don't, uh. You know, sometimes, like, my hand will shake, I guess. And I guess, like, I'm sort of getting over that, like, whatever, you know. Like, is that, that, because, like, a lot of times I'll get compliments despite uh, being like that. Um, but I guess the main thing is some people wonder if that's part of my bit. And, I mean, it's not, but, like, if people like, like, <laughs> it's almost like that made him like it more, so whatever. Uh, but I don't like do it on purpose. A lot of, there is some people that have been, I'm going to be awkward on purpose. Like, you know, but so he was asking me like, Oh, why were you nervous after this long? And I was like, some people just have stage fright. Like, you know, some actors do and they just kind of have to deal with it. I mean, some people, um, you know, that's just part of like, you know, it's really not like you have to be an outgoing uh, I don't know. Who can I think of that's like, I don't know, Dane Cook? He's like really out there, like 
really like you just don't wouldn't think he's nervous at all on stage. You don't have to be a Dane Cook to be, you know, doing stand up anyway. But he was asking me also like, oh, how much of that did you improvise? Because he said it seemed like I the whole thing was just what what <laughs> the whole thing was improvised. I was like, whoa, no, not at all. I mean, like there was a couple things that I thought of right before I went up, like. And that's the trick. You kind of trick people into thinking it's naturally coming out of your head. I think that's... The, people think, for some reason, I don't know why, but people really do think stand-ups don't write it down and they just go up on stage and riff the whole time. I mean, <laughs> maybe Dave Chappelle can do that. Like, But Dave Chappelle wouldn't be having that as a special, even. Like, he used to do those, like, six-hour shows, like... Oh, Dave Chappelle set a record for being on stage nine hours. Not like most of that is not going to be stuff he's going to call a bit. You know what I mean? Like, um, but yeah, you kind of trick you. I mean, that is really hard. That's probably the hardest, one of the hardest things. Like, I have to think of ways to make it seem fresh to me. Like, say something different, or think of just you know, I'll I'll just try to think of things to say right before I go up. Like. That time I did because I just did say that I thought those two guys were doing <laughs> a bit that they were pretending it was the first time. But they really did want to go on stage as a checklist item. Um, and look, maybe it wasn't a pickup artist thing. I just think it was because afterwards the one kid said like, well, there's this list that I'm trying to check off like, and most of it is talking to girls. So I was like, okay, that's definitely this then. I mean, I didn't say it to, like, out them. Because I don't think, like, if I would have said that, and it's true, because it was sort of working on the host of the um, mic, like, at least in she was interested in the guy was saying, like, I don't know if if that was attracted to. That's a different thing. I mean, you might be able to get girl's attention that's weird to me that that would lead to sex all the time. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I guess it depends. The girl would have to just be that type to be, oh, this guy's mysterious or something. Um, so anyway, I don't know. I just had to talk about that because that, that was the single weirdest mic experience I might have had. Uh, well, I don't know. It's up there. But the fact that I couldn't tell what they were doing, like, even, like, when I was leaving and, like, the whole time, I still was like, is this a bit that they're doing? But then I realized, no, I think these guys are doing some kind of either pickup artist community or, like, something about improving yourself. I don't know. Like, I always joke about that kind of stuff. Oh, I'm a self-improvement guru. The one guy seemed like he was doing that because he was talking like that. He was like, yeah, your energy's like really like, and he could have been like, because he was laughing as he was doing it. So I think he was doing this because he was like laughing. So that's why I just didn't trust that they were being genuine. And I still don't. I think they were. At least the one guy w was doing this as like a pickup, like something, you know. But um, yeah, so. uh. I'll let you know if I ever... I mean, I don't think I'll ever see them again because I think they don't live here. And they were just doing... So, like, I don't know. Like, ugh. I just... Like, just be yourself, man. Like, at least the second guy had jokes he did, but I'm like, were they street jokes? You never know if somebody's doing internet jokes now. I don't know. Because he was so new. But he didn't even ask anything about tips. Like, I don't know. I'm sick of these people that are like, I'm going to try stand-up as a goof. Like, like I, I, I don't need, like, you know. I have to, you know, it's not even comfortable for me still. I just do it because I want to get my ideas out there. So, like, I just don't understand people that are like, I'm going to, like, push myself to do stand-up for, like, a month or something. It's like, don't, don't ask me for... Don't talk to comedians like you're going to be doing it then, you know? Yeah. 
Yeah, guys. Yeah, guys. Pick up artist Pick up time. Artist time. Artist. Pick up Pick artist. Up artist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I'm a fucking pickup artist. Sorry for talking about that so long. Uh, this is what it's uh peacocking when you look like an asshole. And I really would think this guy's gay or something. I wouldn't think he's trying to get women. So they're all just nerds that didn't know how to talk to women. And instead of just talking to women and seeing how it goes, they're just like, I'm going to make a fake persona. And the, the ones that dress up like that are, are the worst. I'm a pickup artist. Yes. A pickup artist. Oh, there was a movie called that. Let me guess the plot of this. This looks like an 80s movie. Young Robert Downey Jr. Let me just guess the plot. Um, so this guy, Robert Downey Jr. is a pickup artist. That, oh, wait, the movie Hitch did this too. It's the same plot. The pickup artist. So Robert Downey Jr., I'm just guessing. He's a pickup artist. He gets all these women. And then this woman. Uh, they're not, the skills aren't working on her. The skills ain't working on this one. And he, and he, and his his game's weird. 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 He's like, my shit ain't working on her. What the hell's going on? And then he falls in love with her. Pick up artist movie. 1987. Come on. Ah. He looks so young there. Looks like 15. Let me guess. Uh, womanizer D- uh, Downey Jr. gets beat at his own game by uh, Molly Wingrold. Uh, after a quick fling, her indifference only causes him to mo- become more smitten. Yep, just like Hitch. Yeah, so that's, you know, yeah, Hitch. That's funny. I didn't even know about this movie, and it's the same plot. And Will Smith is, like, kind of bisexual in real life, too. God, this movie was so corny. Hey, yo. I'm going to get bitches and shit, yo. All right. Will Smith is a date doctor who coaches other men in the art of wooing women. And then, while coaching one of his clients, Kevin, Kevin James, 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 he finds himself he finds falling, himself falling, falling, for, falling Eva, for Eva, for Ma- Eva Mendez. 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 Hitch has difficulty connecting with Sarah. None of his romantic methods work on her. Hitch but has, he falls for her anyway, anyway, just like, just like just like the pickup artist movie. Weird. Did people not go see that movie? Because it wasn't that old. It was like, it was a pre-sober Robert Downey Jr. Junior. Gossip Town. Gossip Town. Welcome to Gossip Town. Town. Gossip Town. Gossip the, Town. Podcast. the podcast. The podcast. Alright, anyway, I'm going to close with this. Remember, always be closing when you meet those bitches and shit, yo. Like, oh. Always be closing, yo. If you meet a girl and you see a girl in the street, whistle at her, and then go up and go, hey, let's... F- Fucking fuck. If you see a girl wh- within three seconds, you better approach her and ask for a goddamn number. Aggressively. Always be fucking closing. Closing. Always be closing. 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 On the first on day. The first on day, the first day, half. First half. First day. First day. Okay. Always be closing. Now. All right. I wanted to talk to about this to close out. I think. Uh. Howard Stern. Howard Stern leaves bunker to die. I hope I didn't talk about this last episode. Uh, leaves bunker to dine with pals for first time since 2020. Uh, he has been broadcasting from home since March 2020. He's 68. I mean, okay, probably more high risk, but it was all these celebrities in uh, New York. So it was all these celebrities, and uh, 
You know why it was all these celebrities? I think it was uh, because they want to entice him to finally leaving the house. I mean, that's fucking nuts, dude. I mean, this is the danger of being this rich. Like, you'll become a Howard Hughes type. And he actually, like, afterwards was saying he regretted doing it. He's that much of a, like, coward, scared of germs guy now. Despite his dinner, he still wants to remain a hermit. And he called the outing exhausting. I had an exhausting weekend. I had, a, I had an exhausting weekend. Emotionally, physically. First time in two years I ventured out of the house. Uh, I can't do an Howard impression. It was too much for me. It was too much. I haven't been out in two years. Uh, oh, my God. That's how we should sound. I said to my wife, I don't want to go. I'm in a panic. I don't want to get COVID. I know our president has told us the pandemic is over and everyone is walking around without masks. I still just don't want to get COVID. He's previously described himself as As being super paranoid about diseases and, and germs. Even his wife is like, what are you doing? Like, it's always, and the thing is, the women now are the ones that are still scared of COVID. Like, in the city, it's, it's like 99% girls that are still wearing masks. Not every girl, but the ones that are, it's like mainly women that are still scared. And like, the fact that you're the guy and you're, you're the one that's like having to be coaxed into, guys, come on, Jennifer Aniston's going to be there. John Hamm. John Hamm is going to be there. Jennifer Aniston, uh, weird face is going to be there. Ah, dude. Jimmy Kimmel said that in order to stay at Stern's house for a few days in the summer, him and his wife had to be tested twice. Plus, they weren't allowed to leave the compound. And if they did, they weren't allowed back inside. Yeah, dude, like, you will get COVID because your immune system is going to be so fucking weak. It's going to just... Like, you will get it and get sick bad from it. Because you chose to just be afraid. I think that would happen. I mean, you probably, I don't know, COVID's not that bad anymore, so. But you'll get it. I mean, you, you know, you probably got every booster. Kimmel has been trying to coax the hermit out of the house. He said, we're worried, but we're going to lose you from society. It's unhealthy. Well, good, he at least said that, even though he's an idiot. Too. I'm surprised Jimmy Kimmel isn't like this anymore. I think Jimmy Kimmel, I don't know, something's going on. He's just crying all the time. <laughs> uh, I'm going to look that up too. Here we go. All right, well, this is a friend to death. I guess that makes sense more. Uh, he cried over Cecil the lion's death because some, cause some like rich hunter guy killed a lion in Africa. Um. He cried over it. Are you kidding me? And he cries over Bob Saget's death on his show. I wouldn't be crying on your show like that. Like, I would be upset and maybe cry in private, but I just can't see that happening. Um, Unless, I just, there's something up with this guy. I mean, okay, let's see. Jimmy Kimmel cried over you, Valde shooting. It takes someone really brave to, uh, to cry about a shoot. Yeah, dude, you've been crying all the time lately. Yeah, that is an awful tragedy. Don't get me wrong, but like... Okay, here we go. Jimmy Kimmel cries over Las Vegas shooting. There's his face. There's his crying face, guys. This guy, this is, it's a, he's a Kevin Smith now. I wonder if he sounds Right now, there are loopholes in the law that let people avoid background checks. If they buy a gun privately from another party, they buy a gun online or at a gun show. So I want to show you something. These are the faces of the senators who days after the shooting in Orlando voted against a bill that would have closed those loopholes. These are the yes. 56 senators show them. who didn't want to do anything about that. Now, 90% of Democrats, I'm not talking about politicians here, I'm talking about people. And okay, you are though. 7% of Republicans support background checks at gun shows. 
89% of Republicans and Democrats are in favor of restricting... Where's the applause break? Let's do this. But not this gang. They voted against both of those things. Yeah. So, with all due respect... Name them. Show them. Your thoughts and your prayers are insufficient. Applause break. Oh, I thought he was going to cry there. Yeah, I see. I, yeah, I get commenting on it, but not... Dude cries every time there's any kind of tragedy. He fucking has to cry on camera. I don't even understand how you that emotional. You know what I think it is? Like, uh, he has this weird diet where he does that fasting. And I heard he, like, it's, like, crazy for him. He does, like, a 300-calorie day, and then he eats like crazy the next day that's probably fucking you up a little bit and the fact that he's like maybe a he's, he's maybe a vegan <laughs> he's eating soy all the time i don't know i don't know something's going on maybe he has a weird home life i don't know and here we go again jimmy kimmel tears up tears up discussing tears up. florida shooting florida shoot oh, and demands man. action from politicians children are being murdered Yeah, we know. We hate it too, dude. Are you kidding me? What is this fucking bullshit? Like, we all hate... We all were upset about this. What does he do? Like, hold in his emotion, and then he's like, camera's rolling? All right, here we go. And then he lets it out. All right, hold on. Three, two, one. <laughs> uh, I'm holding in my tears. Like, do you really... I, all right, I do agree with mental health checks on guns, though. I mean... And it's really only the South that is, like, crazy with the laws. Like, I think most people do support that. Like, he even just said, like, I don't know why the other guys don't. I mean, some people are really, like, I don't know. I, I mean, I kind of think we'd still have tragedies without the guns. I mean, if they got rid of all guns, they'd get illegal ones, or they'd make bombs from the Internet or something. People are really mentally ill in, in the U.S. right now, like... And then they would go, we need to ban the, uh, the, the bomb-making stuff on the deep web that we can't access, you know? There's a dark... You can just buy guns on the dark web, probably. And, uh, uh, Disclaimer, I'm not saying to do that. Uh, I'm saying that there's other ways. And, yeah, like, there was many... There's always many signs that the, this kid is fucked up and they just don't do anything. It's not just, like, guns. But anyway, I don't understand going on. Yeah, we all think it's horrible that children are being murdered. Wow, Jimmy Kimmel. Whoa, did he say that on camera and cry on camera? I like how he tries to paint it like... He probably even says during his crying spells that he's like, I'm not trying to be... <laughs> oh my God, I just don't get it. There's this many... Like, these are all different years and different incidents of him crying that, I'm, that is coming up right now. So he cried at the Florida shooting. He cried at the Las Vegas shooting. He cried at the Uvalde shooting. He cried about his son. Okay, maybe this is why he's so emotional. His son had a birth defect, but did he get bigger, better? I don't get what's going on with him. I, I think he has some kind of imbalance going on or something. I mean, yeah, your friend, Bob, like, if you have a close friend, I understand that. And he chokes back tears during Kobe Bryant tribute. How well did he know Kobe Bryant? Dude, everything that happens, he's going to cry about it. Put your money on Jimmy Kimmel crying on camera. Does he do Instagrams where he's tearing up? That's what I want to know. <laughs> Bryant. Kobe Bryant was a hero in the way Superman is a hero. Okay, that's a little ridiculous. Yeah, it's, it was a horrible uh, tragedy. But I mean, tearing up? Like, oh, I guess he did know him. Kobe Bryant checked in repeatedly with him. I don't know. It's just the fact that he does it so much. Like, oh my God. All right, now this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous, dude. Another crying that I found, guys. Guess what? He cried at Jennifer Aniston and Justin Theroux's wedding. Guess what? They broke up, so... 
Maybe that was a bad omen. Jimmy Kimmel cried while officiating their ceremony. Howard Howard Stern said he was extremely funny, but he cried a little bit. I didn't think he'd get through it. It's fantastic. It's fantastic, Robin. Yeah, I mean, you can tell she had in a friend who's done work done. It's a shame. I'm just sick of the getting work done shit. I just want to know if these celebrities are bisexual or not. Like, that's kind of all I want to know. This is funny. <laughs> Bryce Dallas Howard said she was asked to lose weight for the new Jurassic Park. I mean, so what? I was asked to not use my natural bonnet body. I mean, do you want to look fat on screen? I don't understand what the big deal is. Like, it's a really competitive field. I mean, plus she was skinny in the first one. I don't think I've seen the second one, but I mean, why would you want to get fat? You would have to have some kind of like explanation in the movie. I mean, look, if she really, I mean, you're going to get mocked though. If you look chubby, you're just, you know, and then you're going to complain about that. So like. I just want to see if she, like, is fat. <laughs> this might be mean, but, uh... My dad's Ron Howard, okay? Where's, like, show a picture of her big, then? Weight gain. That's a polite way to put it in. <laughs> oh, it says here, Oh, she gained 35 pounds for a TV show. Is that what it was? Or just, you know... Well, I guess that makes sense. I mean, but... Why wouldn't you, like... I don't understand why you would... Not think of the fact that you weren't chubby in the first one. Oh, she gained weight for Black Mirror. And then, I bet she kept it on. I bet you that's what happened. Or maybe she always had, who knows. Oh, she had a health diagnosis too. I mean, look, we're really getting to celeb celeb gossip gossip now. now. Oh, she has two oh, kids. Two that, makes kids. that makes sense. She had postpartum, she had postpartum depression. 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 Uh-oh. 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 She was in Killer Kids. Kids. I would be like... I don't... <laughs> I would be like... I would be... I would be scared of my wife, I have to be honest. I would be scared of my wife if she got that. Um, I'd be really scared. Like, the fact that so many of them have thoughts of killing their kids when they get this, like, Andrea Yates, Andrea Yates anymore, 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 anymore. I would be, I would be like, you, uh, how you, you feeling a little, like, homicidal today, or what's going on? You okay? No thoughts of, uh, that we all need to go to heaven or whatever? You don't want to do that? No thoughts of doing that? You're not like that girl in Shutter Island now, are you? Yeah, hey, how you doing? Oh, good. So you're not, you know, <laughs> just, just, uh, you wouldn't think uh, we need to go to heaven, like, and save us or whatever. Just, you know, I'm just joking. I'm just asking as a joke, though. There would be, like, no way to not sound like an asshole that you think your wife's going to turn evil. <laughs> you're not thinking about killing, you know. So you're definitely not thinking, like, the, the only way to save us is to kill us all or whatever, like, the dem- the devil's coming. And this is like the revelations. You don't think the devil's growing inside our kids or anything, do you? And the only way to save them is to like have us all go to heaven, quote unquote. Just checking on you. Checking on you. Checking on you. Just checking on you. Just checking on you. We got a crime. We got a smash and grab over on uh, Prince Street and uh, Spruce. Have anybody, have anybody respond to that? Oh, by respond, I mean just don't do anything because if I'm the police, hashtag ACAB, we're all supporting Black Lives Matter here, we're supporting the movement, don't do anything about it. Just tell me what's going on, but don't do anything. We're all, we're pro-people, we're not pro-police here. Blue Lives Matter? I don't think so. All right, just so anybody knows, this is an ACAB police line. Everybody get out there and don't do anything. Oh, uh, looks like there's a kidnapping taking place in downtown, uh, in, uh, um, Kensington near Philadelphia over some heroin or something like that. 
Stand down. Do not do anything. We are an ACAB police department. Thank you, and have a good day. And, uh, yep, just let the people do what they want. That's all I'm going to say. Bell reform. Get these people up back on the streets as fast as you can. Do not back the blue. Down with the police. Thank you. This has been Sergeant, um, Sergeant Ashamed to be a Police Smith. Thank you, guys.